Believe it or not, back in the day, mapping out dungeons on graph paper by hand as your DM described the dank crypts your party explored was a core feature of Dungeons & Dragons. But just as time has moved on, so has the general perception and relevance of this classic style of dungeon crawling. The dawn of the VTT and the more heroic focused themes of modern role playing games has essentially brought an end to the practice of dungeon mapping as OG role players once knew it. But what if I told you that there is a way to make dungeon crawling feel fresh again and you don't actually need a map at all to do it? That's right, a mapless dungeon. Sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? This concept was recently introduced to me in Crown and Skull from Runehammer, but you can apply the same methodology to any TTRPG that you'd like. And while I was quite skeptical of the mapless dungeon at first, after putting it to practice at my table, I gotta say, not only do I love running mapless dungeons, I'm not sure if I'll ever go back to doing it the old way ever again. Here's how it works. Rather than drawing out an entire dungeon in your notebook, planning out its hallowed halls, and filling out its sussy side rooms with creepy crawlies ahead of time, the art of the mapless dungeon relies instead on just two sets of random tables. One table denotes the room that the party enters, and the other denotes what the party will encounter within this room. And that's it. Have players roll 2d4 and describe the room the players find themselves in and the encounter that they will experience within that room according to those roles. There's no need to worry about the details of hallways or other connective tissue with this method. Simply describe the party maneuvering to each new room as they go, however feels most natural in the moment. Now, this method does require a fair bit of confidence and improv skills from the Game Master, and it can be intimidating to do at first, but it can also be so liberating. Of course, the themes of the dungeon, why it's there, who or what is in there, what they want, what could go wrong, and the ultimate goals that the players must achieve within this dungeon should all be determined ahead of time. And with this knowledge in mind, the Game Master is then free to brainstorm whatever vast halls or claustrophobic crypts they fancy. No architectural design degree required. To prep a mapless dungeon, simply describe four possible rooms and four possible encounters in one hyper-descriptive sentence each. Then, as players explore, dim the lights, lean on moody, atmospheric music, roll a couple of d4s and allow the theater of the mind to take over. Explain to your party that these twisting halls seem to swallow them whole. Allow the disorientation to take hold. Use it to your advantage. And if an encounter calls for it, feel free to bust out the dry erase markers or virtual tabletop map minis, terrain, and represent what's going on. Don't worry about it being perfect, because as soon as your party moves on, so too does this loose representation of the room. This keeps your players on their toes, knowing that the farther they tread into the dungeon, the farther from familiar territory they fall. Okay, I know this can be kind of weird to wrap your mind around, so let's make a small starter dungeon for you to try with your players. Bada bing, bada boom. Here's your room table, and here's your encounter table. As you begin your session, you call for your players to give you two d4 rolls. And let's say that one player rolls a three on the room table, and the other player rolls a one on the encounter table. You then describe to your players that they've stumbled upon an abandoned mining operation, not far from the entrance of a yawning cave. As the party begins to explore, they meet Old Willie, who offers to sing them a tune to lift their spirits. Now, whether or not Old Willie is a friend or he's ready to rip their throats out is really up for you to decide. But as your players wrap up this encounter, have them roll 2d4 again and repeat this process until they roll a 4 on the room table which will then lead them to the next section of the dungeon or to the exit if there's only four rooms within the dungeon. This method works for larger dungeons or even mega dungeons too. You can break an entire castle down into multiple sections and create a pair of room and encounter tables for each section. Just make sure that one room on the table leads them to the next section of the dungeon. 
Maybe a horde of rats scurry through a sewer grate, or your party stumbles upon a chapel with a shattered stained glass window that leads them out to a rickety balcony beyond. Of course, it's your game and you are the game master, so if you roll the same room or encounter multiple times, you may elect to ignore that roll and try again until each room on the table has been exhausted, or simply explain that the party has somehow gotten themselves turned around and backtracked. This means your players could get lucky and breeze right through, or they could get really unlucky, finding themselves stuck wandering in circles, struggling to survive as the dungeon's twisting trails consume them. The choice is yours, but I would encourage you to check in with your players and make sure they're still having fun with this process every step of the way. If things get too redundant, feel free to just move them along to the next cool thing. So that's it. That's how you can run an epic dungeon, completely mapless. Pretty neat, huh? Give it a try with your group the next time your campaign calls for a good dungeon crawl. Become mapless. Be sure to let me know how it goes in the comments down below. Alrighty guys, I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of lost in here. I think I need to move on to the next encounter, but I'll see you next time. And until then, venture forth. And please subscribe.